Welcome to the Quick Performance Engine Lab. Today we're going to talk about how to diagnose and troubleshoot belt noise on your serpentine system. It's a problem that almost everybody deals with from Ford and GM to people like Quick Performance. And there's just some quick tips that we can give you in order to work you through this process and get your system to where it quietens down. The first thing that we need to do is determine is the noise a chirp? or a squeal. Now a chirp would be sort of intermittent like a chick, uh, whereas a squeal would be more of a continuous. Uh, the chirp is going to indicate most likely that it's a misalignment and the squeal will probably be a tension issue. Now it can be that you can't quite figure out which one it is and there's a simple water test that we use. Uh, we grab a water bottle while the engine is running, squirt on the groove side of the belt and that will make either the noise go away and then come back, which we would say that is probably a misalignment, or it's going to make the noise a whole lot worse. And in that case, we would call that a tension problem. While the engine is still running and you're doing this test, I would like you to observe your balancer. Now there is a rubberish ring right here that is a wear item. So if it's an older engine, but also factory new balancers, even directly from GM can have defects and they'll have what we call the LS3 wobble. And so it just sits there and wobbles a little bit and that can be a, a source of your trouble. So we want you to look at that while you're looking at these uh, water tests as well. Now, when it comes to noise, it's, it's, it's a lot of time comes down to uh, belt tension. And what I mean by that is that this belt length is actually wrong. If this was in a more relaxed position, it wouldn't actually be putting enough tension on the belt to keep it seated down into the grooves. One of the other things that happens is that you put on a belt and these tensioners have tensioner marks on them right here. We'll get a close up of that. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you install your belt, the tensioner is in operating position and you move forward, everything seems fine. And then a few hundred miles down the road, it starts making noise. What has happened is probably one of two things. Either these have finally seated down into the grooves, effectively making the belt longer, or uh, these belts do have a little bit of a stretch to them. So as they break in, they are going to stretch out just a little bit. And this will go from a good position to a relaxed position. You don't have enough belt tension. A lot of times when we're fielding tech calls, this ends up being the issue. So we typically recommend putting on a pretty tight belt, knowing that it's going to come back into operating position. One of the other things that can hide an issue that you have at the beginning is these belts do have sound deadening technology. Because serpentine systems are so precise, they are prone to being a little bit more noisy than say a, a V-belt system, but with that spring-loaded tensioner, everything, really these are minor issues. It's, it's sort of like fuel injection. It's, we wouldn't want to go back to carburetors, but fuel injection is more temperamental, a little harder to dial in, but it's worth it. So Gates has a, what I call sort of a microfiber on their belt, and it has this sound deadening effect of even if you do have a little bit of misalignment where the belt is trying to run up the groove and then squeaking back down, not enough to throw the belt, um, it deadens that for a good long time until it wears off. And then you can have that noise appear 500, 2000 miles down the road. Continental bought the old Gates, uh, not Gates, sorry, uh, Gatorback uh, belt. And so they have uh, a split in their grooves every so often to help do the same thing. Deco did a split groove design where there's just a split down the center of each groove. So each company is doing their own thing to try to mitigate noise. So that's just something to be aware of, that everything seemed fine, you get down the road, something happening. It's just something to keep in your head that that might be what you're seeing. You had a problem all along, the belt was just doing a great job of disguising. One of the other things is, you know, we're all human, we're all going to make mistakes. So just because the instructions say that this is the right belt length, or even if the label says that it's the right belt length, it may not be sure. And that's why it's so important to check your actual tensioner marks there. We had a situation with a customer recently, they were having a belt length issue. They bought two different lengths of belt, but if you actually look on the label, you'll find that it says that they're effectively the same length. Now, we didn't actually have the customer measure that to see if that was a printing error or if it was an error in the manufacturing of the belt, 
but he said those belts fit exactly the same. And so, I mean, that's something to be aware of as well. You're dealing with lots of different parts from lots of different manufacturers. Just be aware that, you know, you're gonna have to look through this. The third step, if that doesn't get your belt solved, is to do a inspection of all the pulleys and a reinstallation. So we're going to take the belt off, we're going to inspect every grooved pulley to make sure that it's free of debris or buildup of paint or anything like that. Those can cause issues. Uh, I've also seen you know, something hit a, a pulley, pulley one time and it flattened one of the grooves and it was shredding belts. So making sure that your pulleys are free of debris, you also want to give them a nice little free spin, make sure that the bearing isn't making noise. A lot of times a, a belt squeal will be misdiagnosed as a, a problem with the bearing on one of these pulleys. We have had bearings go bad before, uh, but typically if you spin it, it's not making noise, move on to something else, it's probably not the bearing. <clears throat> After you've uh, inspected all of your pulleys, disassemble the system and make sure that everything, it's free of debris. There's not a gasket sitting out that you mounted up to. Make sure that your power steering pulley is fully installed correctly. Um, you're also going to just generally make sure that nothing was pushing something in or out. And then you're going to go back through an installation process. It's very important to do the installation process the way that we have it outlined in our instructions because we're going to tighten bolts in a certain sequence in order to make sure that it gets as square as possible. So you don't want this being cockeyed like this. It might be bolted up tight. It's not square. There's a procedure to go through to make sure everything is square to itself and that's important, obviously. The most important thing to remember is that if you encounter an issue, we want you to reach out. We're different than other companies. We do answer the phone. We do respond to emails. If you're reaching out to us on social media, give us a couple extra days. We're a small man team, but if you call us, you will get somebody to answer the phone and get your questions answered for you. This can be complicated, but we can make it easy for you. Thanks.